we are back to square one and we're going to go through all of these adjustments. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm going down to zoom in. Let's try 50% and really get in on that hourglass. So this is an hourglass I have on my bookshelf and I encourage you, you can use these photos, my photos that I took with a unedited from my phone, but I encourage you to take your phone and snap some pictures. They don't have to be perfect. That's the whole goal is to take imperfect pictures on your phone and really make them look a little bit more polished, edited, and refined. So I'm going to use my adjustments panel for this one, and this is going to create smart filters that can be moved around to different layers if I ever choose to do so. So let's start with brightness contrast. We've already kind of done this a little bit. When I do select brightness contrast within the panel here, the adjustments panel option, you'll also see in your properties panel here, the sliders. So that's kind of nice to have all of this together. So in my properties panel, if you don't see your properties panel, just make sure you go up to window and make sure it's selected. So now I can change the brightness and contrast, make it brighter, or I can take all of the darker pixels and make them more dark. But let's add a little, you don't need to kind of get too over-processed here. Let's just do a bump it up a little brightness here. And let's do contrast. So we want to darken the shadows and lighten the highlights at the same time to create a contrast. So we're going to increase the contrast. And you notice when I increase it all the way, it almost looks artistic because you usually don't have natural occurring contrast this dramatic. So it almost looks like a digital painting. And some people, when they do digital paintings and artworks, or they take a photo and they try to make it look like a digital painting, they'll use a lot of high contrast because it's just not as naturally dramatic in real life. And you can also lower it. So if I lower contrast, it's going to look a little more washed out. And there's definitely times stylistically when you want to have something more subtle. So let's just increase the contrast. You know, you can do any level, not all the way. Let's kind of do in the middle here. So I'm just gonna do 50. And I think it kind of brings out a lot of the shadows and highlights here. And I do use brightness and contrast a lot. So that's definitely one. Some of these I don't use very often. And there's some that I use quite a bit with graphic design. And brightness and contrast is probably something I use every time I edit a photo. Let's talk about levels, and this is not a photo editing course. It's a graphic design course, uh, so I don't want to get super duper detailed with photo editing because you could spend 20 hours in Photoshop just on photo editing. It's a little bit more for photographers when they're taking their photos and they're selling them and they're giving them to clients. Uh, we just want a photo to look great for our design, and we want to know the basics, and that's what this course is going to focus on. Not so much the super duper details of photo editing. And this is when levels, levels can be really powerful, but also pretty complex. So right here we're in levels and I'm going to go ahead and bring out my properties panel just so you can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. And I'm also going to bring out my layers panel so you can customize these in any way. So you can kind of see everything at once. What levels does is there's white points and there's black points. So white points are right here. This is all the white uh, colors that are in the document. And then there's black points. So it's all the black, dark colors in the document. And you can shift these levels around so that you reduce the amount of black or white in the photo. This is more about adjusting shadows and highlights. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this black point right down here. This is our black point. And we can click and drag this. And what it's going to do is it's going to take every dark pixel and make it completely black. That's going to make it completely black. So the more I drag this in, the more all of the pixels become black or dark. And the opposite is true. If I take this white point, I click and I drag down, it's going to take all of the current lighter pixels and slowly make more and more of them white. So this is kind of your white point. So you can get almost all the way to completely white or all the way to completely dark. This is a very great natural way to add contrast. Of course, you also have brightness and contrast, which kind of does some of this for you. Um, but this gives you complete control. And this is where it does get so advanced. You know, only, you know, photographers will really need to know 
the super duper details. And as designers, it's really great for us to be aware and to, to explore it. And these are your mid-tones. So this is your 50% gray. So it's all the kind of gray mid-tones because you have um, highlights, you have shadows, and they have everything in between, which is not really dark. It's not really light. It's a mid-tone. It's kind of in the middle. And you can change that point too. So let's say I wanted to add some quick contrast. I can bring a lot of those darker pixels and bring that black point higher. So it's going to take all those darker pixels and make them black. And same with this, I can bring it in. So if I bring both the white and the black points together, it creates this super duper high contrast look. Maybe not go quite as far, just, just little adjustments. And what's great about Let's go ahead and show the layers panel here. What's great about having this layer, I did it through the adjustments panel. So this layer is now its own layer. I can drag this across other photos if I wanted to. But right now, all the, these layers now apply to everything that's underneath. So right now we just have this photo, but both of these, the levels adjustment we made and the brightness contrast adjustment we made all apply to everything underneath. And if I were to go to image and adjustments and do it this way, it would only be applying to the hourglass, no matter how many other photos or layers I had in the document. So at any time I can go back and edit. So let's say, Ooh, you know, that was uh, too much adjustment on the, le on the levels. So I can highlight that and I automatically have it populated in my properties panel and I can back it off a little bit if I felt like I went a little too overboard. So that was levels. And now we're going to talk about curves. So what is the difference between curves and levels? Well, curves gives you more minute control using an S curve. And that sounds complicated, but it pretty much levels and curves do the same thing, which is take your darker pixels and make them lighter, take your lighter pixels and make them darker. And you can also change your midtones as well. So let's say we're in curves. And it's going to be the same thing we just talked about in levels and levels is a much easier tool to use. This is a little bit more advanced. So we could just select the darker pixels, which is down here. You're going to see this kind of line going up across. So this is white and this goes all the way down to black. And so this is black and this goes all the way to white. This represents the lighter and darker pixels are the tonal curve in the photo. So you can see this huge spike. So these are the darker pixels and there's definitely some darker pixels in here, kind of your mid tones are here. And then you see this big spike in this photo. And that is most likely because of all of these light, light pixels that are in the background. And each photo is going to be different. Really dark photography is going to have maybe some spikes up here in all of the darker pixels because it has more darker pixels. So let's say I wanted to take all of the darker pixels and make them a bit brighter. So I'm going to kind of select this black, uh, this black point and slide it across. And it's going to take all, it's going to do the same things that levels did. And it's going to make all those darker pixels darker. And the same thing over here, we can take this white point and drag it and make all of those white points whiter or all the white pixels wider. And the thing about levels is everything is on a curve. So I can change different points along the curve. So what I can do is I can set different points. So let's say I want these very darkest of colors to be lighter. So I'm going to click at the very bottom and bring it up. And it's going to lighten all of those dark, dark pixels. And it's going to make it much more light, a lighter profile. But what's great about curves is I can take your midtones and instead of just making everything bright and washed out, I could take the midtones and make them a little darker. You could take right here where you have all of your widest pixels and I can bring those down or I can bring them up and make them brighter, almost white. So that's the only difference. You're, it's pretty much does the same thing. It makes darker pixels wider and wider pixels darker, but it does gives you just more control because you can really do as many points here and make lots of fine adjustments. We probably don't need both levels and curves. Pick the one that you feel like is easiest for you to use. Uh, levels is a more simplistic version of this activity. So we can delete curves, we can keep levels, but we probably don't need both on this. So I'm just going to delete one. And anytime I want to make an adjustment, I select this and I'm able to, to, to go back and make an adjustment. 
So let's say that's gray. I really want it to be a little bit more white. I can click right here where it spikes, move it up, and then I can also click next to it and move this back down so that only those lightest pixels are affected, just making them a little bit brighter. And that's it. So let's move on. I promise they're not all this complicated. I think levels and curves are probably the most complicated of all the adjustment options. Let's go ahead and move on to exposure. So the term exposure comes from photography. So when you use a traditional camera with a flash, how much was the lens open during that time where the light was flashing? What's kind of your exposure? How much light did that camera get a chance to soak in? And so this has a very dramatic effect. So I'm gonna move this along the slider and add exposure, and it's gonna do super, super big changes. So you don't need to go all the way out here. It's gonna look incredibly washed out, overexposed, using the, the correct term, or I can reduce, go negative exposure, and it pretty much can go all the way to black. If you don't have any light and you take a photo, you're not gonna get any picture, you're just gonna get a black photo. So this is exactly what exposure does. I tend to, whenever a photo is just a little dark, sometimes I like to go to brightness and contrast and use the brightness setting. But sometimes if I need to really, really brighten a photo, sometimes I'll just do a little bit of exposure just to add a little bit of that brightness. I brought in a very kind of dark photo from pexels.com that I found that I thought would be able to show these effects a little bit better with exposure. So I'm in my adjustments panel. I'm gonna go over to exposure. So let's say I want to add uh, just some quick brightness. So I'm just gonna slide this just ever so slightly over and it's gonna brighten it up. But you notice as I do this, it gets really overexposed and processed. It just, you have these high blocks of just pure white and it doesn't look very good. So this is when you just need to add a tiny bit to bump it up. Um, there's also offset. What offset does is it leaves the highlights alone and changes just the midtones and the shadows. So let's increase the offset. And you notice how it's leaving the highlights alone when I increase it. And it kind of almost adds this gray tone to it. And you can also subtract. And once again, these are to be used just very little bit. So I'm going to increase the offset, and it kind of brings, notice how it's just completely dark, just nudging it a little bit, kind of makes it a little bit more of a dark gray rather than black. And gamma correction changes the midtones. So I can increase gamma correction. And you'll notice on the slider, when I move to the right, it actually decreases. It's kind of tricky because it's kind of the reverse. So now it's getting darker. But I want to make it lighter, so I'm going to add, which is moving to the left, to gamma correction. It kind of brightened up those darker areas. So you notice how I didn't use a whole, I'm not sliding this all the way to the left or right, just very, very small moves. If I ever feel like I want, I messed up and I want to go back, I can always click right down here to reset and I can reset everything back to normal. So now I know just to maybe do a little bit of exposure, just brightens it up a little bit maybe add just a tiny bit of gamma correction. And all of a sudden you can kind of see a little bit of the left side of her face kind of come more into the scene. So I just wanted to change the photo so you can kind of see that more in action. 